Brakate ho, brakate ho shy, brakate ho, brakate ho shy, brakate ho, brakate ho shy, Bahashem Makakadash. The blindness to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to the Akim out there pushing this word in all sincerity and all truth. It's your brother Kabash from the James Jamaica camp. This lesson is going to be a very short lesson, you know, which is um, hopefully edifying to the spirit of the Lord. Yahweh Bahashem Yashai, Bahashem Makakadash. It's going to be focused on the branch of the Lord, the, tithe, the, 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 um, the man, you know who has the title of the branch of the Lord. There are several um, precepts, you know, in the Old Testament, which refers um, to the branch, you know, at, as a title, you know, of the Lord, you know, and through the Spirit we understand that that branch is, um, is Yahweh Shai, you know, so just um, for edification's sake, you know, I will um, read a few precepts, you know, that speak, you know, to this person, to this, um, to this man, you know, that is called the branch, you know, and what he will come to do you know, um, for the children of Israel and for the um, for the elect of the nation of Israel. And then, um, you know, we, we go into the Hebrew word for branch to get, you know, some further understanding, some further clarification and education through the Spirit. You know, so without further ado, let's just get a first precept. This is Isaiah 11, verse 1. And they shall come out, and they shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, Jesse being David's father, you know, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Right, and if we can, um, you know, just as a, as a side precept, you know, we just um, get Revelation 22 verse 16. Right, this is Revelation 22 verse 16. I Yahweh Shai have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of Jesse, the bright and morning star. Right, I will go back here to Isaiah 11 verse 1. It says, and they shall come forth um, a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch to grow shall grow out of his roots, you know, and just for, um, for edification's sake, you know, let's just look up the word, um, the word for Jesse, and the word is Yashia, right, which means I possess, grandson of Boaz, and father of David, the king, right, so this is Jesse, David's father, Yashia, right, which means uh, I possess, right, so that means that this branch is going to come from the line of Jesse, which ultimately means from the line of David, you know, which we just saw in Revelation 22, verse 16, Yahweh Shai says that he is the root and offspring of, of David, you know, which is the son of Jesse. Verse 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. All right, I believe we can get that in the New Testament as well. Um, let me see if I can I can get it. So lucky. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, I believe this is it. I believe this is it. Uh, this is um, Saint John three verse thirty four. For he whom, for he whom Yahweh has sent, speaketh the words of Yahweh. For Yahweh giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things unto him. He, he that believeth the Son hath eternal life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Yahweh abideth on him. This is good, but this is not exactly what I was looking for. Um, there's a precept in the New Testament that, that you know, that, that quotes this um, very closely. You know, that shows you that it's speaking about Yahweh Shai even more clearly. You know, but, you know. If brothers can if brothers can find it, you know, just put it up on the um, on the comment board, you know, um, just for edification's sake. He says, "And shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity the meek of the earth. And he shall smite with the earth the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And isn't that what Yahweh does, yo?" Right? And is that what Yahweh did when he came on the earth, I should say? And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Yeah, because the, a lot of times Yahweh brought out, you know, um, saints that were, um, that, that, that pretty much cut the, the Pharisees and, and the scribes, the wicked Pharisees and scribes, yo. Right? He, he taught as one having authority. Right? And he challenged the, um, the, 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 the authority of the, um, the, 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 the so-called um, Jewish leaders at the time, yo. Right? saying to them that, 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 that they pretty much are, um, are following the customs of men 
and not the customs of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Alright? Let's jump on to the next precept. This is um, Jeremiah chapter 23, and I'll start from verse 5. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and the king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Right? Why, why, is, why is the Lord raising unto David that righteous branch? Right? Um, there's a promise the Lord made unto David that he said out of his seed will he raise up um, Messiah. Uh, it's hard to find it. Just give me a second here, Akim. I'm sure I can find it in Acts if I can't find it up here. Sure, I can find it in Acts. It's a lock, yeah. Should have had this um, ready. Alright. Alright, here we go. This is Acts chapter 13, verse 22. And when he had removed him, he raised unto, up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my law. Of this man's seed, hath Yahweh, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a savior, Yahweh Shai. Right? So the Lord promised to David, you know, that his seed, uh, uh, through his seed, will he, um, will he save um, Israel. By, by who? By Yahweh Shai, the Savior, the, the Messiah. Right? So if we jump back to Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5, it says, um, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch. Right? Meaning that the branch will come out of David, will, will, will shoot from David. It will be the, the, um, the offspring of David, pretty much as it says in Revelation. And a king, which that king is Yahweh Shai, shall reign in, and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days shall... In his day Judah shall be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Right? And it's because it's said here in um in Isaiah chapter eleven, you know, that he will um that he will be called with righteousness. He will be called um here we go. Isaiah eleven and verse 5, it says, And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Because Yahweh was the, was the embodiment, is the embodiment of the righteousness of Yahweh. Right? And through Yahweh righteousness, through grace, the elect, you know, which are, which are his brethren, receive righteousness and then manifest that righteousness of Yahweh. Right? So it goes down the line, you know? Right? So if you jump back over here to Jeremiah 23, verse 6, it says, In his days... Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. Why? Because he's the deliverer. He's Yahweh Shai. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the righteousness of our God. Right? I will jump again. The next precept. This is Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness. And, and again, it describes him as righteousness. Yo. Right? The branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. Right? And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days, I so say the same thing again. Right? It says, In those days shall Judah be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name where it's, she shall be called the righteousness, the Lord our righteousness. For thus saith the Lord David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Right? So there's another prophecy that's written here in Zechariah 3, verse 8. It says, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. Right? And we are men who that, yo, the prophets that are out there in the highways and the byways, you know, um, preaching this truth, yo. Right? Let me, um, let me just get that as a side precept, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 8. I believe it's verse 16 there about. Right? Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. It says, Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel, and the Lord of from the Lord of hosts which dwelleth in Zion. Right? We we are those men, yo. We are those those, those children, you know, and Yahweh is, is our um father, you know, pretty much. Um and we are for signs and wonders in Israel. We are the highways and the byways, you know, are, are out there for a spectacle unto the world, yo. Right? So going back to um 
So Zechariah 3 verse 8, Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wonder that. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. Right? So that, 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 that servant that he's speaking about, which is the branch, right, is talking about Yahweh Shai. Right? And there's another prophecy that we're going to jump to that, um, that, that speaks about Yahweh Shai. This is the final one, and then we'll just, we'll just delve into the word itself. Right? So this is um, Zechariah again. Chapter 6 this time and verse 12 and speak unto him saying thus speaketh the Lord of hosts saying behold the man whose name is the branch he shall grow up out of his place and he shall build the temple of the Lord right he shall build the temple of the Lord right so that temple is speaking about is, is alluding to the spiritual temple of the Lord yo right um let me just get that precept Right, show you how I um speaking about building the temple. This is Matthew 26 and verse 61. And said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. Right? Matthew 27, verse 40, and saying that thou destroy thou that destroy the temple and build it in three days, save thyself if thou be the son of man come down from the cross. Right? And again, um John 2 verse 19, Yahweh Shai answered and said unto him, Destroy this temple, and I will build it again in three days. Alright, let me just jump to it. Alright, and it says, um, then said, then said the Jews, forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. He sp he's speaking of the um the spiritual temple. Yo. All right, let me um let me see if I can get that in um in in, in the in Paul Paul's writings. You know, to show that we are part of that temple, yo. The elect are part of that temple. Alright, so this is, um, this is Ephesians chapter 2. And I'll start from verse um, 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahushai himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So this is the, this is the temple. You know that the um the priest up here in Zechariah six verse twelve is speaking about you, when he says um the branch the man whose name is the branch, he shall build the temple of the Lord, right? So the temple of the Lord is talking about his elect, right? Let me read it again. It says, um, matter of fact, I'm reading from verse nineteen, so you see that it, um is talking about um the men of the elect. It says, no, therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, which are a part of that temple, a part of that building. Yahusha himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of Yahweh through the Spirit. So that temple of the Lord is, uh, is talking about Yahusha and his elect, starting with Yahusha, yo. But he's the one that started the building, yo. He's the one that started that he's the chief cornerstone. And, and, and if you know anything about building um, buildings at that time, you lay the chief cornerstone first, yo. So Yahweh so Yahu Shai was that chief cornerstone that was laid first, and then everything was built upon it, yo, upon him, yo. Right? So going back to Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. And the council of his peace of and the council of peace shall be between them both. Right? Now let's let's prove that Yahweh Shai is a high priest, yo. Right? Alright, this is Hebrews chapter 7. Alright. Let me start from where uh, let me see what we kind of jump down to. Alright. Right. So this is um, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 14. It says, For it is evident that our Lord sprung out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning his priesthood. And it is far more evident that for, uh, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. For he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Right? So this proves... You know, that the branch, again, will be what? Will be sit, sit on his throne and rule. You know, and also he shall be a priest upon his throne, yo. And the men under him, the 144,000, will also be priests, yo. Right? Let me get that. 
Revelation chapter 5. Right? And I'll read from verse um, verse 9. It says, And they sung a new song, which is who? The elect, yo. Right? Thou art worse is to take the book and to open the seas thereof, for thou art worse slain, and has redeemed us to Yahweh by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, yo. So just as the branch, you know, is going to be a king and a priest upon his stone, so the men up under him, which is the 144,000 starting with the 12 apostles, will also be uh, um, kings and priests, yo, under him, yo. Right? So the branch is talking about Yahweh Shai. Right? Let's get into the word now. So the word here is uh, Tazamach. Tazamach. And it says sprout, growth, branch, sprouting, growth, sprout. It says um, shoot of Messiah from the Davidic tree. Right? Meaning he came out of David, yo. And if you go down to the um, Gisenius' Hebrew child lexicon, the first part of it is speaking about um, shoot as in um, the fruit of the earth, right? We have this this phrase here, paraya, or paraya, right? Ha arataza, which means fruit of the earth. So paraya means fruit, right? And ha arataza means um, the earth. So this is paraya harataza, fruit of the earth, right? So it's talking about also fruit of the earth, right? Or the produce of Yahweh. Hence, tazamach Yahweh, the, the produce of Yahweh, which is speaking about who? The elect, yo. The elect are the produce of Yahweh. Right? But if it goes down, it also is talking about um, the physical fruit of the earth. But then, there's another interpretation. And if we go down here, it says the other interpretations of this passage are unsuitable both to the context and the parallelism of these words. Among these, there is the explanation of those who understand Tazamach, the branch or offspring of God, to be the Messiah. Right, which is prevented by Parya Ha'arataza in the other uh, hemistish, which is um, pretty much um, a phrase. It says, not necessarily so, the one may refer to his Godhead, the other to his manhood. Right? So, um, being the fruit of the earth, he's the fruit of Yahweh, you know, that refers to his, um, his, his um, divinity, if you want to call it that, and, uh, and um, being the fruit of the earth to his, um, to his manhood, meaning um, the fact that he came as a mortal. Right, um, going down, it says, But the Messiah is undoubtedly to be understood in Jeremiah 23, verse 5, 33, verse 15, which we read, where there is promised to David, Tazamach, Tazadak, right, Tazamach, Tazadayak, which, which means a righteous um, branch, yo, a righteous branch or offspring, right, and Zechariah 3, verse 8, and Zechariah 6, verse 12. Where the Messiah is elliptically called Tazamach or branch or offspring, i.e., of God. Alright, so that's pretty much what I wanted to, wanted to bring out. You know, hopefully this letter was edifying to the spirit. Brakatehawa, brakatehawa shai, brakatehawa, brakatehawa shai. Forgive me the spirit to this lesson. Shalom, Akiyam.